Hi there, welcome to the next episode of Making Mannequins Heads, Making Mannequin Heads into Planters. There we go. How are you? Good to see you. I'm glad you're here. The progress is really progressing progressively on this head. Very exciting stuff. I love it, love it, love it, love it, love it. So um, what we're doing is we're painting the foam, the caulk saver that has been glued onto the head. I used uh, hot glue to tack it on, and then I used this glue, a multi-grip glue, to actually sort of finalize or super, <coughs> super goo it on, uh, get it to really, really stay on real well. Um, I have a bucket of water next to me on the floor, and welcome to our space. And um, so what I'm doing is I am trying to really work through my colors, continue painting my colors. I put down some uh, some of the colors I've been using. I have this dark bronze that I'm using. That I'm just gonna touch up the spot. That I want to bring into the mix. The uh, copper and the, the light silver go beautifully well, uh, next to one another, so I'll probably be doing more of that. And But I wanted to bring this darker copper into the mix of the head a little bit more. I'm gonna put it on this back little wedge, baby wedge. Um, I actually had gold, but I'm fearlessly uh, changing my mind. And I get the very ends of the tubes and then I'm just going to paint, paint, paint. And um, the paint is all dry around it. So I gotta be careful because the other, all the other tubes that I'm painting around have already gotten two coats. And these paints, other than the silver, oddly enough, require two coats to get the best coverage on this uh, silver uh, foam. And I don't know if it's because it's a like a, such a solid or uh, such a smooth surface, but um, this bronze totally, in order to get down to that color, really needs a second coat. The copper really needs a, or it's not copper, it's considered another type of bronze. It's like a, a fresh bronze or cleaned bronze is the, what I would call copper color. Um, but it's just different brands have different versions of what they think bronze is, apparently. Uh, the light gold definitely needed a second coat. So, and these are all like different thicknesses, different weight of body of paint, but oddly enough, they all don't cover as well as the silver. I've used the silver on uh, other things and it, I guess the silver just has a lot more pigment in it or something because that, that silver is like one, co what co one coat of wonder even when I'm not putting it over actual gray to start with. So I don't know what the deal is with the silver, but it goes on really, really, really well. Um, so all of these, I've had to put two coats on and there we go. So now I'm gonna take this long one and I'm gonna add I mean, actually, I didn't put down enough of this. I'm going to paint it um, this dark bronze color. Dooby dooby doo. And not put too much because I don't want to waste my paint. Um, Lee's teacher, Lee's printmaking, one of his, he's taking classes with a, an artist, local artist, uh, who is absolutely brilliant in her instruction and her ideas. And she does a lot of uh, she does, she's a printmaker, does beautiful work, but she is a, also an excellent teacher. Uh, she's very much into like, like she's a really good art teacher in that she has great suggestions, great ideas, pushes her, her um, students, or at least from my experience of what she's done with Lee, uh, out of their comfort zones um, enough for them to explore the ways of doing things that are different from what they are sort of bottled into doing. So Lee has been, been encouraged and supported to uh, really do things differently than he was doing them. And it's really, and to, to really be empowered 
for him, it's been empowering him to, this is why she's such a good teacher, or what makes her, in my view, such a good teacher, to expand and explore different, not only mediums, but approaches and um, forms of art that he was like, I don't do that type of thing. You know, that's not my thing, my, not my jam. And he's actually started painting. This is the coolest thing in my book. He's a fabulous printmaker. So he does um, like, well, he'll cut stuff. Cuts, um, uh, he does block printing, but he also does, he takes it like to a whole different universe of block printing. And he does cutouts, like he'll cut stuff out and he does like paper pieces making from photos and different, different, completely different sources, but he puts them together in these gorgeous um, kaleidoscopes of visual uh, movement and, and feeling and colors. And so what she does in her class, it's a mid-century, I think it's mid-century modern inspired, but um, she does in her classes, they take and make their own paper for the paper cut stuff. And which is, I think her big, I think that's her big jam. I think that's her main uh, focal artistic medium, if you will, not necessarily block printing, but she takes and cut paper cutting. And, um, but taking paint that you've used, that's left over. And when you, you, when you do paper, so he includes, he uses markers, he uses paint, he prints with blocks that he actually makes the blocks, the, um, the, the stamps and all of these other things is really, really, really cool, right? So he's got all these, all these different things that the way he's doing it, but she has him, has them. When possible, if you have extra paint left over, don't waste it, uh, which is fabulous. Cause you know how guilty you feel when you've got like you're like well crap i squeezed all of this paint out of here and i used half of it and i've got you know two tablespoons of paint which is a lot of paint and can be very expensive if you're wasting paint every single time you paint and it's not you know with acrylic paint you can't put it back in the tube if it's already half dry um and you can put some paint back in the tube but it's, anyway so he takes the paint and he just brushes paint. It's just like a total aha moment for him. And he paints paper until he's out of actual paint. And then he uses those papers later in his pieces. Uh, cuts them and you know uses the colors because they're completely unique colors and completely unique paper. And you can use any paper at that point. You don't have to buy colored paper. You have created your own paper to do paper cut with, paper cutting pieces. So I just think, I thought it was brilliant. I was like, holy crap, that is like, you are literally creating the entire piece because you're creating the paper that you're cutting as well. You're not taking paper that somebody else cut or, paint, or that they colored, you know, it's not just like getting colored construction paper, which he also uses. But he also like uses photographs that he cuts into pieces and then the way he puts them together is just the texture that he gets and the, the depth and the, oh, it's just incredible it's cool it's really cool stuff if you've never checked out lee's stuff uh lee's work it's it's mind-blowing gorgeous stuff yeah so there's extra paints there is a way to use those extra paints to your advantage why, uh, if you work on paper, or work with paper, um, just paint paper, literally like splotch it on there and um, create paper that you can use for other work. Brilliant. Diane Zweig is her name. Incredible artist. Her, her, her art is also really neat to look at and to experience. Um, I don't know if she has a much of an online 
um, presence, but I hope she does. She does really cool work, but she's an excellent, excellent teacher. So now what I'm going to do is I want to, I love that. So that's awesome. It's like a rainbow of metallics. I want to take this and this, this dark bronze, and I'm going to do it. So I've got it there with the silver there. Is it too much to bring it there? Yeah. So I'm going to bring it in in the back here. I'm going to bring it here and I'm going to paint it there and then here. I'll do this little bugger first. Do this. Hi, I know the video ended. <laughs> Sorry about that. I continued working for the rest of this um, the episode and didn't realize that the phone was completely blank because I ran out of power. So my apologies for that. But um, so the next episode will pick up with more work uh, and we're finishing up. We're getting close to the end of this last mannequin head conversion into a planter. Uh, so take a big breath. Ah, sorry for such a short episode and you'll see all the work that I did in the next episode. I'll make sure to show it to you so that you can um, see what you missed. All right. Bye.